With just four months under my belt, these are the 2023 DIYs with the most likes and engagement from viewers and fans of the channel. The first project is a mini shelf made from an 11 inch Dollar Tree wood plaque. I paid about $3 for this and I knew I could make something cute with it. I'm lightly sanding the edges, brushing away any dust, and covering it in one coat of chalk paint in the color hazelnut. I love hazelnut. It really matches with any home decor style and color theme, and you can make it fit in any room. I'll set this aside now to dry while we start our second step. I picked up these birchwood branches together in one pack at Hobby Lobby recently, and I'm gonna choose the one that has the fewest curves in it. I'll take this into my shop now and cut off two pieces, each at 11 inches, the same width as our wood blank. Use whatever cutting tool you have and feel most comfortable with. These are not difficult to cut. Laying these out on the table, I'm trying to determine which way the two pieces will fit together without a gap between them. I need to remove the flaking bark where I wanna add small amounts of wood glue to join them. And these zip ties will hold them together while the glue dries. This is a heat transfer that was designed to be used on a t-shirt, but I'll be applying it to our wood plaque. I don't need these words at the bottom, so I'm trimming them off and then using my tape measure to find the center of our wood piece. To find the center of any flexible medium, I find it easy to fold it in half and pinch the top and bottom and use that area as a marker. This works really well when applying any kind of transfer to the surface where you need the image to be centered. I'll transfer this using a piece of parchment and a small crafting iron. Be sure to tape the transfer down so it doesn't move around while you're ironing. And we'll When done, always allow your transfer to cool for about a minute before removing the protective film. Look how beautiful she is. I'm using a flat, clear top coat by Rust-Oleum to seal and protect my work. Once it's dry, it's time to attach our birch logs. The wood glue hadn't really dried yet. I guess I didn't give it enough time, but I was ready for the next step. So I secured the pieces together using just a modest amount of hot glue and did the same to secure the logs to the plaque. I'm not real sure what these picks are, but they're beautiful and they came in a larger bunch. I picked up a Hobby Lobby and the stems were about 26 inches long before cutting them down for this project.
I'm placing a finial on the top of here to give it a little extra character, but I do end up removing it later because the finial base is just a little too wide for the top of this and I really would have needed a smaller one. Just keeping the footage in here so that you can see that adding a small detail like this can take it to the next level. This is cute as it is, but I like a certain amount of detail on my projects. Using the right embellishment, I think, gives it a high-end look and makes it a well-thought-out gift if you choose to give it away. If you guys like this project, keep watching, thumbs up the video, and consider subscribing to my channel. These videos take a lot of time to create, and while I do enjoy every minute of it, your support lets YouTube know you find value in this content. I strive to bring you fresh ideas with projects you haven't seen before. If this sounds good to you, press that notification bell and share me with your friends. Moving on, I am making two tiny knots in a strand of jute to cover the mounting holes in this tiny tag. Never skip these finishing touches. It's what makes your work stand out from the rest. Using more of that same jute rope, I cut four strands at approximately three inches and used two together on each side of the logs, gluing them on and making them look like they were originally bound together with rope. You don't want to tie these together with rope before attaching them to the plaque because it'll create a space between the logs and the plaque that you don't want. I mistakenly left out a clip where I cut down and glued two pieces of a wood coffee stir stick to the underside of the logs just to give them a little bit more security. Hopefully you can see them here. This rope will cover the sticks nicely. Flipping it over to the back side, you can see that I painted it just to finish it off. And I think this is a good place to mention that the two sawtooth hangers included aren't really necessary here. I removed them and reattached just one at the top center of the plaque. And as you can see, it hangs beautifully. Here she is completed. I felt that it was missing a little something, so I added in those few sprigs of dried wheat and a lace bow draping over the stems. This can be hung on the wall like so, or sit upright on a countertop or mantle. I really like the outcome of this. It was easy, it didn't take long to create, and by my standard it looks store-bought. High-end. What do you think? Do you like this one? For the second project, we're making an embellished cylinder base. We're using air-dry clay and these three silicone molds. I've linked these down below for you should you want to recreate this project. To keep the video time to a minimum, I planned placement and prepared my clay embellishments off camera. I start by gluing one piece on at a time. There's no rush here, take your time. I'm using Dollar Tree wood glue super glue, but almost any glue will do the trick. A viewer recently shared that she uses Type Bond Quick and Thick to glue her clay onto a surface. Now this glue will set you back a few more dollars, but I agree that it is a fantastic option. And anytime I'm working on a vertical or round vessel, I like to secure the clay as I go with small pieces of painter's tape to ensure they don't slide around while I move on with the project. When piecing clay together, I lightly spritz the area with water and use a silicone tip tool to smooth out the seams.
Once I have everything laid down, I'm gonna place this off to the side for 15 to 20 minutes to give it a little time to dry. Coming back to the project, the glue is now dry. The clay is still wet, which is perfect for accepting paint. Now painting it while the clay is dry does extend the clay dry time, but it reduces the chance that you'll get cracks in your clay. So for me, the extra time to dry is worth it in the end. I've had this color black current in chalk paint for a while and I was excited to try it out on this vase. It took two coats to cover every nook and cranny of the vase and clay. I wanted the clay to stand out from the background, but be subtle at the same time. So I mix a little bit of white into the black current to lighten it up a bit and start applying it to just the clay areas. I lightly brush against the grain to bring out the details. As a reminder, paint while wet will be a shade lighter than the end result when dry. So just keep that in mind when you're, when you're getting it on here. If you prefer a matte finish, seal your vase with a matte top coat after the clay has completely dried. Personally, I adore clay projects finished with a high gloss top coat, giving it an enamel-like finish. How stunning. I love how the amber tones in this paint give it definition. And the shine takes it from ordinary to extraordinary. What do you think? Do you prefer a matte or a high gloss finish? For our first DIY, we're going to make an elegant indoor mini wreath. I'm gonna start by gluing seven wood blocks in a tight row across the bottom of our bamboo ring. Now, if you're lucky, you can find the two pack of bamboo rings at the Dollar Tree. I can never find them at mine, so I just went ahead and ordered a pack, a large pack, of them from Amazon in three different sizes, but I will go ahead and link that in the description box below for you in case you're interested. It was a very good deal. Gave me lots of rings and a couple of different sizes to play around with. I'm using a combination of wood glue and hot glue. You could use just wood glue, but I would not recommend that you use just hot glue. So use a combination of the two or just use wood glue and wait for it to dry. Next here, you see me finishing up the mm -hmm. bead stringing. I wanted to just put this on a piece of twine to keep everything lined up neatly. I'm gonna glue these little ends here just to keep everything nice and secure. And then we're gonna start to attach it to our ring. Very quick and easy process. Now I have chosen several different varieties of my dried flowers, preserved flowers in this bundle. And I'm going to start to put them together the way it makes the most sense, what makes me happy. And you can see that it's very easy. Now when you're putting your, when you're choosing, I should say, when you're choosing your florals for this, if you're going with a natural look, make sure that the stems on your natural flowers are all the same color. Sometimes when you get these in different packs, you can end up with a few with, you know, blue stems or green stems. So if you see here, I've stuck with the natural theme. So we're just tucking a few other things in. I don't think you can see it here real well, but in the back I did glue another tumbling tower block just to keep those flowers there standing up for me. And now as we approach the end, you can see that this is just a strip of leather, pleather <laughs> from the Dollar Tree. And um, it has beautiful texture and that's what I like about it. 
And right now I'm just kind of deciding if I want to fold these ends in or just leave them nice and raw here. And I've decided to leave them raw. This DIY is beautiful and you can do different variations. You can paint everything here um, and then add dif different varieties of flowers, different colors. You can add silk flowers, dried flowers, natural flowers like I'm doing. seven oval wood blank that came from a different project it's already painted white and I'm just putting a clear coat of Mod Podge now the video that where I actually smoothed this napkin onto the oval is missing I apologize I don't know quite what happened to that and we're gonna get into the next step here and this is just where I take out my air dry clay and I'm working it in my hands to make it nice and pliable warming it up so that it goes into my mold nicely now this mold you can get on Amazon, but I found it for about half the price on Timu, and I'm gonna link it below for you. I'm um, just pushing it in and I'm shaving off the top and the access, just giving it the little flat surface that it's gonna need to adhere to our project. And so I'm gonna start here by dusting once again with my cornstarch and just put a little bit of clay in this smaller swallow. I actually don't end up using this smaller one for this project, but I'm going to let it dry and possibly use it for a future project. But as you can see here, I'm just misting the clay while it's still wet with a little bit of water. And I'm just going to make sure that it has just a very, very light coat of water over everything. And this is just going to help prevent it from drying out too fast. And while this clay is still wet, we're going to start painting. Here you see me just doing again a very light coat of a robin's egg blue and then I'm going to in a moment start to just kind of blend in some of the darker blue which I believe is just titled bright blue and these colors are by Craftsmart. On my palette there I also have just some white acrylic paint as well and that's just going to help me lighten things up, add light tones as I go and kind of make everything blend nicely. And you'll see over the next few seconds here that I'm just doing what I do. Swallows are typically blue on the top and a white or a darker gray on the bottom. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look identical to an actual swallow. But I think this blue is going to really go nicely with our project. And these shades that I picked will give us a nice ombre effect as well. just bringing in a little bit of black just a touch on the eye and the beak of our bird and then we're going to just continue to work with our blues and white to get the color we want <music> bird looking the way I wanted to have it I did set this aside overnight and came back in the morning to finish the project as you can see I drilled two small holes side by side at the top and this is how we're going to hang it You'll I chose the braided because I thought it looked a little bit more high-end than just regular skinny old jute twine so I'm just gonna tie it in a knot here leaving that loop big enough in the back to actually hang so we have it nice and tight there. 
And next I'm just going to trim up these little, um, I guess, what do you want to call them, arms. <laughs> and I'm going to tie it in a knot once again and use my hot glue. And here in a moment you'll see me start to wrap these little arms, for lack of a better word, around itself to make a larger knot. And this only takes a moment, but I think it just adds a much needed detail. Cleans it up nicely. It makes it look deliberate. Now I also want to add that while I was off camera, I painted the edges of this um, oval just to give it more of a, I guess, natural wood edge look. Now the back of this project is looking a little ragged because I had attempted originally to put the napkin on this side, messed it up and started to scrape it off. So here I'm just gonna fix it by coating it up with a nice coat of white acrylic paint. And here we are at the end, the final reveal. This first one is a shoe care box that I picked up at Goodwill for just a few dollars. I want to say that it was $3.99 or $4.99, but I really needed something in the living room to kind of give me a place just to put all the junk. The cat hair brush, extra remote controls, um, the cat hair cleanup tool, whatever else, um, phone chargers, whatever else I could find to put in there just to kind of clean things up and have a nice elegant place to store them out of sight. This box is, um, going to be just something very very simple but elegant and I first started off with two coats of white chalk paint and now here you can see me distressing the edges just to give it a little bit more of a worn look because this is more of an antique type or vintage type piece of um, small furniture or um, storage box what have you I'm just changing out my paper here. I think I'm using a 120 grit. You just want to use very fine paper on this. And I'm just trying to get some of that paint off that I covered up the bolts with. And then of course we're going to go inside next with the white paint. I had contemplated painting the inside a different color, but I really like the idea of being able to see everything inside the box, whether it's light in the room, dark in the room, I'll just be able to find things quickly. And then next I'm going to use some spackle from the Dollar Tree. You can also pick this up at Walmart. Very inexpensive, of course, at Walmart. And then a buck twenty-five at Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to go over the stencil, trying to make everything very smooth, trying to eliminate any kind of texture on the surface. And this does take a few minutes just to work it into the stencil. And now that we have the stencil off, I'm just gonna do a little cleanup here. This is gonna set to dry about 30 minutes. And then I'm coming in again with fine grit sandpaper just to get off any of the small ridges that I found. And I know you can't see me here, but I'm blowing on it to get the dust to go bye-bye. And I'm gonna go in with some more of the same white chalk paint. I think it's kind of funny how whenever you put this spackle on the wall, it dries plain white, but if you put it on something else like this, it dries in kind of a cream color. It's strange. If anybody knows why that happens, let me know. Um, not hugely important, just something I kind of observed. But I'm just going in here around all of the edges, making sure that I don't have any of that cream color peeking through and that we have a nice finish. And I'm going to set this aside for, again, 10-15 minutes to dry. You can certainly use your heat gun before I come back in with some gold leaf rub and buff.
And I know this video is moving kind of fast. I want to be conscious of your time. I, I so appreciate the time you spend with me here. So I want to make sure that I'm getting the content to you in a quick and efficient way, but I also don't want to deprive you of some of the details. So if you ever find that the videos are moving a little too fast or even just a little too slow for you to keep you interested, please let me know in the comments or drop me an email and I will certainly take those ideas into consideration. And I just want to point out that here off camera, I believe while I was waiting on that paint to dry after painting the stencil, I popped on just a small finial to use as a handle just to grab that top easily. And I put a little rub and buff on there too. The rub and buff doesn't take very long to dry. It's almost instant. So now I'm just going to go in and slightly dry brush on some white so that we just really have that pink rub and buff, pink and gold rub and buff sneaking through. And if you find that you get a little heavy handed with the white paint, it's okay to go back in with the gold and just do a little touch up here and there. Just keep working with it until you get the look you're going for. And so now I'm just going to touch up the hardware on the box with the rub and buff, the bolts on the side, including the latch on the front. Now I did go back and do a second touch up to that mark that was on the front that you just saw there. And when everything was completely dry, just a few minutes later, I went in with some clear Waverly wax just to protect this piece. And as you can see, I'm rubbing it off almost immediately and it's giving it a sheen, but not too much of a satiny sheen, just the perfect um, sheen for a vintage piece. I love all the wood grooves and markings on this box. This is why I chose not to further dry brush because I didn't want to accentuate those. I want to be able to see them when the light hits it the correct way. But you could certainly, if you get a piece like this that has all of those wood grains in it as vibrant as this one does, you could dry brush over and make them pop even a little bit more. But this piece is done and inside there houses all that junk that I was saying I needed a place to put. I hope you guys like this one. I think it's super cute. I found this little votive lantern at Goodwill browsing the aisles. It was kind of hidden back there and I thought, wow, this thing wants to come home with me. So my love for lanterns would not allow me to pass this up. I want to say it was $1.99 and I absolutely fell in love with it, but it did need a facelift. We gave it a coat of gold metallic spray paint in matte. It only really needed the one coat and it was ready for transfers. So I have quite the collection of these small rubble and transfers and I'm going to start off by putting some green on here and then gold and then in a few minutes you'll see me add in some additional color with some reds, pinks, etc. I don't plan to use this lantern to hold a votive, although in playing back this video, I realized that there's a votive candle in there. I remember after it was painted, I just popped one in to see what it would look like through the little um, shade that's built in and apparently never removed it. So disregard that because that's going away and we're going to put some beautiful dried flowers in its place and make this just a nice little cute vessel for some dried flowers for fall.
When I'm at the thrift store, I never pass over the glassware aisles. As common or as ordinary as many of the items can seem, I can almost always find a little gem. So I picked up this last time, this 16 inch decanter and thought, wow, wouldn't it be cute to put a terrarium in here? Now I've made terrariums in the past, but never anything in this small of an opening. So bear with me <laughs> and um, we're gonna come up with kind of a unique way to get the items inside without disturbing the items, without making a mess, we'll say that. To start off, I'm gonna add a little bit of interest to the bottom of the decanter by painting on a band about an inch and a half to two inches up from the bottom. I mixed together the chalk paint in green antique with a little bit of white acrylic paint to get just a little bit lighter tone of green. And as you can see, painted that across the bottom. It took about two coats and when it was dry, I added on some Mod Podge, which I'm gonna just allow to dry for just a second, just to get a little tacky. It doesn't have to dry entirely. And I'm gonna use that as a surface to adhere my gold leaf foil to. So I'm just gonna quickly rub some of this on and there's gonna be just a hint of gold here when we're done. Not a whole lot, just a nice little hint. And when I have that done, I'm gonna take a little bit of the coffee grounds that I have left over from the Dollar Tree and some pebbles and start to fill just the very bottom portion of the jar. These first pebbles that I put in are basically just to take up space. And this coffee will simulate soil. I do have some remnants of the coffee ground sticking to the inner sides of the decanter. So I'm just taking a dry paintbrush and kind of sweeping those away. In preparation for this craft, I went into my potpourri faux and dried flower stash and pulled out a couple of interesting pieces that I'm gonna try to incorporate into this terrarium along with some moss. And what I'm doing here is I'm gluing the first three elements together. And as it progresses, you'll see that I wisen up and start to glue more pieces together outside of the terrarium and then we'll put them inside and that makes the whole task a little bit easier. So here's where I start to build another one of the elements. I'm just attaching a little bit of faux moss. Actually, I don't even think that's faux. That's real moss, um, possibly even out of my own backyard. So I glued that on and I'm just gluing on a few other interesting pieces. This is a little twig. I have this cute little bird that I pulled off of another craft. So you saw me there getting the hot glue off from the previous project and we're just popping it on there just to add a little bit more detail. And you guys, I've had these little, I don't, I don't think they're really ceramic and they're not resin. I'm not quite sure what they're made of, but I have a set of two of these mushrooms and thought this would be perfect for this project. I've had these mushrooms in my stash for years and never found anything to use them for. So I went to get a piece of black felt so I could put it behind here. Hopefully it makes it a little bit easier for you to see. Now here's where I make a mess. <laughs> I know from past that if you missed the moss that has dried up, if you missed it, it makes it a little bit more pliable. But boy, did I make a mess there on my table. So I hope that's not too much of a distraction and we'll just keep going. And you'll see me periodically just adding in additional elements. 
Here's a second little twig batch that I put together. And then I put that together with the first larger. So kind of building the scene outside of the vessel. And here are these three initial leaves that I had put in and pulled back out. And I'm just gonna go ahead and glue them to the back of the other set that I made. This will offer a little bit of stability and also make sure that everything's placed exactly the way I want it to be. So I think the key elements of a beautiful terrarium is to have a background, a foreground, and then some very interesting pieces throughout. You also want to make sure that you have some of your dark and light greens incorporate, incorporated in there and then some white because white acts as a light. Just like white flowers will light up your garden at night, any little white elements or light colored elements that you put inside your terrarium are going to really draw the eye. This is so cute. This came off of my clematis. So when the bloom had fallen apart, that little fuzzy piece was left and I picked it off. I picked off several and put them in terrariums. They're so cute. All three now, of I did actually add in a couple of these dried DIYs white leaves that just to look like they were leaves fallen and completed and, and somehow ended up in a thrift store. So we're going to take them one by one and make improvements while still appreciating what was originally done. This first one appears to be two smaller chest of drawers that were glued together, one on top of the other. And we're going to start off by covering it in a white paint on the sides because in a moment we're going to decoupage a, an image on here and we really need these sides to be a lighter shade. So that's what you're going to see me do here quickly is just put on one coat of the Waverly Inspirations chalk paint in white. Any light color here will do. We're just trying to cover up that dark. And after we've set that aside to dry for about 15 minutes, I'm going in on the sides and the top with a little bit of Mod Podge and next preparing my napkin. This is a two ply napkin. I'll have it linked down below for you. And I'm going to cover the sides and top with this. First, we're going to go ahead and pull apart the two different plies. Now I let the Mod Podge dry here for about five minutes before I placed the napkin on top of it and using an iron to flatten it out. The idea of having parchment paper between the paper and the iron is just so that you don't get any nasties, any dirt, any glue on your iron. So this is very easy. If you've never tried the ironing method, you should. I've done this with large and small projects and it really eliminates any opportunity for those wrinkles to come in. Even the texture that you find in decorative napkins 
is ironed out. And if you've worked with napkins before, or even just run to your kitchen right now and look at a paper napkin you have, you'll see that it has tiny, tiny little dimples over it. And the ironing method pulls those out without ripping the paper. And now I'm just kind of getting the overhang off there. And we're gonna go right in here now and start to paint the face of the drawers. So when we started, it was just white paint with a black little handle. This is the color celery. And then I'm going in with just a little bit of white paint dry brushing that on. This is a really quick project. You could probably do this in under an hour. And here she is all finished. Now I know that this is more of a spring look and feel. And I want to tell you that I will not be held captive by the season when it comes to my creativity and you shouldn't be either. And moving on to yet another DIY that was attempted or created by someone else. This little white block, it measures two and a half by 10. It had some rounded edges there, which I really liked. So normally I wouldn't go to the thrift store and just buy a piece of wood, but I liked that it was white. It was gonna be easy to cover up in those rounded corners. It had a little cat drawn on there and I believe Sharpie marker and then the word catitude, which I thought was cute, but um, we're gonna make it something else. I'm covering this in chalk paint. The color is moss. And as I'm just measuring so that I can drill evenly spaced holes with the tiniest drill bit I could find in the top of this. And I'm asking, are you guys tired of seeing dried flowers on this channel yet? Hey, it's that time of year, <laughs> but I tend to use them year round, but more so this time of year. But this is just the most delicate little leaf that was pressed and dried and came in a pack of dried flowers that I received. Not necessarily in this same pack as the other flowers you see here, but I had it in my stash nonetheless. And I'm just using Mod Podge, putting on a pretty thick coat here to keep it in place. And then I'm just gonna cover the rest of the face of the block so that it doesn't look odd having just some of it covered. So when choosing and preparing my flowers to go into these tiny holes, I made sure to choose a variety of dried flowers that not only went well together, but kind of matched my mood. There are a couple of different varieties here just to keep the interest going. And I have two of each variety that I chose. And of those little sets of two, they're all cut at the same length, stem length. Um, you'll see me trimming here a little bit to just maneuver them, but I think that trimming them at the same length for each variety is what's gonna allow them to kind of sit perfectly in there at the same height. If you enjoyed this video and the projects we're creating, give me a thumbs up so that I know you like them. This helps me know that I'm going in the right direction. We're gonna go ahead and continue with the project, but before we do, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment and share. If you know somebody else who would enjoy this, share me with them, they will appreciate it. The best part about this DIY is that these dried flowers aren't glued in place. So when the season does change, in the spring maybe, if you wanted to put some pinks or yellows or blues in here, you can. You can totally do that. And I can see this on a much larger scale as well. How about a very long one of these running across your mantle or down the center of your dining room table? Oh my gosh, the vision is there and the possibilities are endless. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see me make this on a larger scale.
For our last DIY, this tray was really substantial, had nice weight to it, a great size at 13 inches. And originally I painted the inside of the tray this brownish tan color, but didn't like it. So then I went back in and did blue all over. I'm keeping the legs white and keeping the type of legs that are on there for now. I will paint them later, but we're gonna start by just putting on a few pieces of decorative scrolls that I made with clay and a clay mold. And all of this will be linked down below for you. I'm using Aileen's tacky glue to adhere the molds to the tray while the molds are still wet. And this just allows it to conform more to the vessel. And I do find that the Aileen's tacky glue or wood glue work best for putting clay onto any object, any surface, whether it's glass, wood, metal, it just for me has always worked best. It also dries very quickly, especially the Dollar Tree wood glue, super glue and um, I tend to turn to that a lot. I'm gonna line the bottom of the tray with a pretty pattern and I pulled a sheet from the Amanda 12 inch paper pack from Hobby Lobby. Now they don't sell this online so I couldn't grab you a link, but again, the name of it is Amanda. You don't have to line the bottom of the tray. I just wanted to give it a little bit more of a color pop. And I was just trying to be a little creative there using the small Dixie cup to round the edges and holding them up to make sure that they are even. And then we're gonna pop it in here, apply our Mod Podge and get it down. Even though it was nearly a perfect fit, I had just a tiny bit of space around the edges. And as you can see there, it was a little bit of a struggle just trying to get it lined up. And here I'm just going back in with the same Admiral Blue acrylic paint and covering these scrolls. As you can see, I painted the legs in the antiquing wax off camera. That's my cat Maisie who was sleeping on the table next to me while I was doing this tray. My cats love to be up my butt all the time, so you'll see them periodically pop in on videos. I'll try to keep it at a minimum unless somebody says, hey, I wanna see your kitties. But um, Maisie is quite the adventurer and she's the one that will most likely photo or video bomb. To finish this tray off, I used some antique rub and buff by just rubbing a little bit on the legs, a little around the edges of the tray to distress it, and then really used it I to accentuate the details simple bookend in at the, the scrolls store, that we put on and here. And immediately thought I could turn this into I a portable. I absolutely so love that's what we're gonna do. the turnout of this tray and how it looks on the table in front of my sofa. I think these are 18 millimeter half beads that I'm placing here on the bottom but this is just to give it a little interest. And then these small, I don't know what these are called. Do you guys know what these are called? Um, it's just a, to me, it's just a piece of wood decoration. And this one is clearly meant to go in the corner of something. So we're going to attach it here 
just to make it look a little bit more fancy. And I'm doing that on both sides. You can definitely use wood glue if you like. I'm not going to be placing anything real heavy on this. It's not going to be outdoors or in a room that gets extremely hot. So I'm just using hot glue. I'm going to screw a hole here in the back so that I can hang it up. And I actually end up screwing another one off camera later at the bottom there. That way I could use this in either direction. So doing it that way, I can use it with the small half circle there facing up or turn it around and have it facing down. But either way, this will be sort of a two tiered shelf. And I'm going to start off giving it a full coat of white chalk paint just to give me a nice base. That white paint has dried and it's time to add a little bit of dimension. So I'm using my antiquing wax and white paint and just misting that with a little bit of water to make it easier to spread. And first, just putting on a very light coat. So we're just gonna work it in all the little nooks and crannies of these details. I'm gonna lay down a little bit thicker, darker coat there on the detail so that the dark um, wax settles into those nooks and we're going to finish it off after that coat is dried with just a simple dry brush of white paint and that's going to make those details pop a little more and when you're making something look like wood these two colors the white and the antiquing wax or you can use a brown of your choice light or dark depending on what you're going for and water it down a bit this is the technique you use to make sure that everything blends beautifully and um, just keep working with it until you get that wood look that you're going for. here it is hung up with just a few pieces of decor let me know what you think if you like what you see in this video go ahead and subscribe give me a thumbs up this is your stamp of approval and when YouTube sees it it helps this channel and its content grow I found this little goblet at the thrift store and it's very nostalgic for me. It reminds me of a candy dish that my grandmother used to have on her coffee table always when we visited. And to me it looks more like a goblet, but I think that it is actually a candy dish. Um, whatever you use it for, we're going to make it pretty and we're going to make it stand out. And I'm going to start off here with just a couple of different shades of green and go for an ombre look. So when doing ombre, you want to take two different colors in the same um, kind of color family. So I'm doing green here and I have a light shade and a dark shade and I've put it down on my palette with white as well. You want to make sure when you're doing ombre that you have a nice work surface for where you're mixing your paint and go in your stash and pull out the best brush you have. A flat brush for a project like this one can get the job done quickly. And it doesn't have to be an expensive brush, just the best brush that you have in your stash. We're using enamel paint. You can use acrylic paint. 
I would not recommend chalk paint for this because it just doesn't blend as well and it can get a little cakey on glass. And I know you can't see real well here, but I am just kind of touching up that base there to make sure it's a darker shade than what I've put on the stem. I'm going to put a lighter shade up here. So I'm taking a little bit of the white and green and mixing it together on my brush. And as you can see, one side of the brush has white, one side of the brush has green. And this is just gonna allow us to erase any lines of demarcation while we're doing the ombre effect. And this is just another paint project that you work with until you have it the way you like it. So I'm just laying down some more of that green. And we're dabbing again, half white, half green, and just watch that demarcation line disappear. I have the side of the brush with the white on it facing up because you're always gonna go lighter to the top. I chose green for this one because I love to bring the outdoors in and I also wanted something that I could draw some color into my room and really be something that I could keep out year round. I have two questions at this point. Do you like this one and are you still awake? I hope so because we have one more left and it is by far my favorite. If you thrift shop on a Monday or Tuesday, then you know that you typically on these days find not only a better variety, but much nicer items because it just hasn't spent the week on the shelf being overpicked. So this one is just proof of that. This cute little shelf slash drawer box looked like it was almost in new condition. I really didn't do anything at all to fix it up prior to the first coat of paint except just wipe it down. Using a foam brush and chalk paint in the color plaster, I'm putting just a light coat on here and allowing some of that brown wood to peek through. When I get a little heavy handed, I tend to take a damp baby wipe that I've let set out for a few minutes so it's not so wet, it's just damp, and I'll wipe away some of that paint. And we're gonna go in on all sides, so this will hang on the wall and people may actually see the underside of it, so we wanna make sure that we're completing it all the way around. And now I'm taking these wood rounds and some scrapbook paper, which I'll have linked down below for you, and I'm just gonna cut it out the same size as the wood round and Mod Podge it on there. And this is gonna give us a little bit of decoration on the sides of the box. We'll set those aside for a sec and give this box a light sanding. Woo, look at that. Look at that beautiful color shining through. And here we go, we're going in with some tight bond um, wood glue and hot glue for a faster adherence and popping it on here on the side. Now this next step is optional, but I have this ribbon spool of pre-threaded beads. These are tiny beads. I have no idea what size they are, but I picked this up at Hobby Lobby 
and I recall that they had two sizes. This was the larger of the two. After doing this project, I almost wish that I had picked up the smaller and put that on the side, but this is still very pretty. And you'll see here that I'm just gonna touch up the edges of these, I guess the fronts of these beads with a little bit of white or the plaster chalk paint again, just to make it all cohesive. And now for the drawers, I wanted a little something on the front. Um, I tried a stencil, didn't like it, and covered it back up with paint and decided to pull out more of these pressed flower leaves. So I'm Mod Podging them on here, pretty thick coat of Mod Podge to make sure they stay because these are real leaves. They're very delicate and I didn't want any part of them breaking off. So a nice thick coat on the wood and then another nice thick coat over top of the leaves. And then I'll cover up the entire front of the drawer just so that we don't have some parts that look like they're more, I guess, glossy than the others and it all looks even. We'll take some gold leaf rub and buff over these little handles. And then finally, once everything is dry, I'm going to go in with some clear wax and just make sure that this puppy is protected. Just a thin coat. And here we are with the finished product. How cute is this to hang by the door just to toss your keys, maybe throw a couple of, um, you know, business cards in there, post stamps. Do people still mail stuff? It's been a long time since I have, but you get the idea. But look at that wood grain peeking through because we did that light sand. The first piece and is these similar to a so bread box, but I think it might actually be a bagel box. I've never seen one of these before, but I thought it was fantastic. I love all sorts of bread boxes and I've flipped many of them in the past. So we're going to jump right in here. Please do let me know in the comments if you've seen one of these before and if you know what it is. So we're going to start by giving a good sanding and a wipe down. There are some raised edges here and some rough edges that I'm just trying to eliminate. As always, the Goodwill stickers give me a little bit of trouble, so I'm just going to soak this with my main green and come back to it. When I'm working with real wood, I rarely spray directly onto it. I will spray the cleaner on my cloth and wipe down from there. I'll be using acrylic paint for this flip. I have a white and gray, which you'll see here in a moment, and we're going to make this just a white and gray two-tone piece. I'll only be putting one coat of the white on because we will be covering a majority of the white up with fabric. Use any fabric pattern of your choice. I'm using cotton in a gray white flower pattern. I believe I picked this up in a multi-pack of matching fabrics from Hobby Lobby in the spring and just had it in my stash. If you've seen me Mod Podge before, you know that I like to use an iron to do this. So I'm going to apply my Mod Podge to the areas where I intend to put my fabric allow it to dry, and then iron the fabric onto the surface. I'm putting on two light coats of Mod Podge and allowing it to dry in between. When you're Mod Podging fabric, it does need to have a little bit more Mod Podge than if you were doing decoupage with regular rice paper or napkins. With cotton fabric, you won't need a very thick coat, but rather, as I said, two light coats will do the trick. If you're doing decorator's fabric or otherwise known as duct fabric, that will require more Mod Podge and thicker coats. So just keep that in mind if you're recreating this. 
this is a craft iron so i don't even think it has a steam feature but if you're using a regular everyday iron you don't need to use the steam feature in fact i would empty out any water that's in the iron before doing this and just put it on the setting for whichever type of fabric you're using if you're using cotton set it to cotton linen set it to linen etc while i am not usually a fan of mod podging over a design that i am placing onto any surface fabric is the exception if you don't mod podge over it it will feel like fabric to the touch adding the top layer adding multiple top layers and you'll see here as we go how we do that is going to make this look and feel like it's actually painted onto the surface you won't be able to touch it and feel fuzzies or any kind of soft surface i'm applying two coats of mod podge over the fabric allowing each coat to dry in between Once that second coat is dry, I'll go in with my sandpaper and clean up those edges. Pay very close attention when you're sanding off the excess fabric because it will create tiny frayed edges and you wanna make sure that all that fraying is removed with the sandpaper. It will be noticeable if it's not removed. So just take your time. If you need to sand more than once, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure that the end result of the sanding leaves you with a clean, clear, edge once i'm happy with how the edges look i will complete it with one final light coat of mod podge with extra focus on the edges and now i'm just touching up the white paint that i accidentally sand it off and here we go in with the gray acrylic paint it's literally just called gray by Cracker Barrel and the top rolling piece will take two coats to completely cover off camera I allow it to dry and then go over all of the painted surfaces with clear wax by Waverly <laughs> And here it is finished and ready for whatever you want to use this for. I think it would be great in the bathroom or on top of your vanity to store cosmetics. You could turn this into a charging station. You could drill a hole in the back for your cords to slip through. And of course you can use it in the kitchen where it was originally meant to be used. I hope you like this one. Let me know what you think. Footstools must be among some of the most commonly flipped items from the thrift store. I couldn't resist this $3.99 footstool with the inlay cushion top. I'm going to start by flipping it over and removing the six screws from the bottom to release that cushion top. And once again, with my mean green, we're going to give it a nice wipe down and remove our sticker. The surface has minor dings and dents in it, so I'm going to use chalk paint on this project to cover it. The sanding is not always necessary when you are using chalk paint, but because this is an item I expect will get a fair amount of use, I want to just be extra careful to make sure that the paint job I give it is protected. So I'll sand it down to make sure we have a nice adhesion of the paint. I'm using Night Sky by Waverly. This is a beautiful color. If I had to explain it, I would say that it's a bluish gray, kind of a navy blue and gray. It 
it'll take two coats to cover the entire bottom portion of the stool. I'll do the same on the top using Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Now that the paint is drying, we will move on to the top, which I think is the fun part. And there were a ton of staples in this thing. I mean, really, who needs that many staples? But nonetheless, when we pull it off, the top is perfect. I was expecting to see maybe some stains there I'd have to clean out, but it was in absolute great condition. This is decorator's fabric left over from curtains that I made last year. So I'm gonna use it on the top of this stool and I'm using two separate pieces so that I can create a pocket on the top of the stool. If you're still with me, thank you. If you enjoy this content, show me by giving me a thumbs up and show YouTube so that they can make this video available to other crafters like yourself. You just never knew who this content can help. And if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so. Come back and see more projects just like this. Everyone is welcome, and I appreciate every single one of you for being here. I'm pinning the fabric where I intend to sew and taking it over to the sewing machine. I'm going to make a straight stitch all the way down to seal that edge. to use the same straight stitch to create a pocket. So you'll see me turning the fabric here to do just that. If you don't have a sewing machine or just don't like to sew, it's absolutely fine to either hand sew this or use hot glue. But when you're using hot glue, make sure that you're not globbing it on there and making it ugly. Take pride in your work and only put the amount of hot glue on that you need. And now I'm just going to wrap the base of the stool with the fabric and staple it down. And because I don't want to be able to flip the stool over and see the bare wood, I'm going to use my pinking shears to cut out another piece of the fabric and cover that bottom up. And I'll adhere this to the bottom with hot glue. I'll give the cushion a light ironing to remove a fold line and make the pocket edge crisp. I wanted to add something a little different to the sides of the stool and went to this paper pack from Michaels. I picked this up, I believe late last year, and I'm just gonna take two sheets of the same and cut out this little flower square and we're going to use that as sort of a a framed picture for the sides when i cut it out i leave a little bit of a white edge showing which we will cover up in just a moment and now I'm going to create a wooden frame for our little picture. You can use some of these skinny sticks from Walmart that come in an inexpensive pack. I think it's a dollar or two dollars maybe. Um, or you can use any other pieces of wood that you might have in your stash. And I'm going to create a mitered edge. This mitered edge is totally optional. You don't have to miter your edges. But we want four different pieces for each side of the stool in each picture that are the same size and we're just going to glue them on. I think the mitered edge gives it a more professional look 
but it is optional. And I'm going to combine wood glue with some hot glue to stick this to the side. Oh, and by the way, I did actually paint the wood frame with white paint before gluing it together. And now that I have one of those on each side, we are done and it's time to put our top back on. So I flip it over and the screws that originally came in this were rusty. So I dug into my stash and found similar size and I'm replacing them with nice, shiny new screws. This next project is a desk organizer, again from Goodwill. And as you can see, I paid a mere $1.99 for what is an obviously brand new, unfinished product, Goodwill. Stick around until the very end because this is a quick flip that has a beautiful result. Off camera, I painted the divots where your different products like your cell phone and your sticky notes Go, I painted that in a black acrylic paint. All of the other areas are going to be covered in antiquing wax. I don't tend to wipe my wax back like many other crafters do, but I will use a dry foam brush just to make sure that there are no globs of wet wax sitting on the surface that will take a longer time to dry. Mixing together some of that same antiquing wax with a little bit of white acrylic paint, I can add some highlights without making it look blotchy. You'll see me periodically misting the surface with water and that's just to make the paint movable and blend a little easier. I set this aside to dry for about an hour and then came back to add some stickers. I have been dying to use these beautiful stickers with the background in black on a project for quite some time and saw this as the perfect opportunity. I'm going to place them on in a way that makes me happy. These stickers came out of a spiral notebook of stickers from Hobby Lobby. I don't have footage of this, but when the stickers were in place, I covered all of the black areas, including the stickers, with Mod Podge, and you literally cannot tell that they are stickers. Here is our completed thrift flip, and a final look back at all of the before and afters of our projects today. I really do hope that you enjoyed these as much as I did making them. I hope you found inspiration to try something like this on your own. Thrifting allows us to affordably style our homes while customizing it to fit our personalities. As we close 2023, I want to thank each and every one of you for your support. You've shown me so much love as I start this journey and it truly warms my heart. Thank you for showing up for me and I'll see you next year. Bye for now.